We're always saying how important it is to own investments for wealth building. But it's one thing to hear the theory and quite another to experience it firsthand. Over the last six months, I've made £60,000 passively just by being an investor. And this is not including the value of my home either, which has also gone up significantly in this fast moving market, but which I don't count as a financial investment. Meanwhile, the vast majority of the UK public continue to fail to own any financial assets, which include investments like stocks and property held solely for the purposes of cash generation and capital growth. In this video, we'll show how important it is to be in the market during the best days and how bad days matter very little if you've played the long game. We're also going to address exactly how I've managed to make way more from investments than I ever could from working 40 hour work weeks. We'll look at sensible ways that you yourself can invest for the long term to get maximum exposure to the best trading days. We'll also briefly address the success of the crypto craze over the last few months. And finally, we'll look at just how bad the investing culture still is in the UK. Let's check it out. First, a shout out to our video sponsor, Invest Engine. With Invest Engine, you can build a portfolio of fractional ETFs for free. Just set the percentage allocation for each ETF and you're done. Say goodbye to spreadsheets and rebalancing your portfolio is as simple as a couple of clicks. Invest Engine also offer a managed service at just 0.25% per year, the lowest we've seen. And new users to the platform will receive a £50 welcome bonus if you use the link on the Money Unshackled offers page, linked to in the video description below. The bull market continues. The S&P 500 Total Return Index, which includes dividends paid, is up 12% in the last six months since May. This is a continuation of the relentless bull market that has been ongoing since the bottom of the coronavirus crash in March 2020. Property markets are racing ahead too. Data on the UK property market typically lags a couple of months behind, but the latest data shows that in the six months to September 30th, average house prices were up 7% and are still rising. How I made 60 grand passively in six months. Firstly, let me address the title of the video. As we showed back in May, my portfolio was valued at a little over 200 grand. Living on the income I make from YouTube, my entire portfolio has grown pretty much exclusively from growth on pre-existing money. It's now valued at £273,000, with the growth coming from the property and stock markets. From property, I've made 47 grand on price growth, representing a 23% capital return, and from the stock market, about 7 grand, representing an 11% return. I also made another £6,000 from rental income, most of which has been reinvested, making £60,000 in total gains passively from non-work sources in six months. It's worth noting that most of Ben's portfolio happens to be in leveraged buy-to-let property, which might be considered high risk, but had he had all his money in an S&P 500 ETF in the stock market instead, he would still have made a tidy £25,000 over the last six months at a 12% return. Why it's so crucial to stay in the market. We should make clear here that markets go down as well as up, and the last six months could easily have been another one of the many bear markets in history. But history shows that there are many more days when the market goes up than days when it goes down, and we see this in charts as a steady march upwards in both stock and property markets over time. These last six months of gains are at least a useful case study of how a buy and hold strategy can hoover up steady gains without needing to take an active approach. When people try to time the market to avoid the down days and capture the good days, studies have shown that they perform much worse on average over long periods of time than people who simply buy and hold. Investment bank JP Morgan have looked into the returns of the S&P 500 over the 20 years from January 2001 to December 2020. If you had been fully invested in the index every day of those 20 years, you would have made an average annualised return of 7.47%. But if you'd missed the 10 best days of those 20 years by trying and failing to time the market, your average annualised return would be just 3.35%. Think about that. For the entirety of those 20 years, just 10 days accounted for over half of your average yearly percentage return. On an initial $10,000 investment, that is a $9,000 return versus a $32,000 return. Do you think your skills are good enough to correctly guess when those days will be? 
ours aren't, and so we make a point of always holding our money in assets for the long term. To finish the point, if you'd missed even more of the best days of this 20 year period, your return would even have gone negative. And the best days are not always found in the best times. The second worst day of 2020, March 12th, was immediately followed by the second best day of the year. Regarding bull markets, an analysis of Morningstar market data from 1926 to 2014 found that a typical bull market lasted 8.5 years with an average cumulative return of 458% and annualised gains during bull markets range from 14.9% to 34.1%. Hardly anyone is doing this. The whole secret to maintaining and growing your wealth is to invest it into assets rather than have it stashed in a bank savings account. Hopefully this is known to everyone watching. In the 2019-2020 tax year, cash savers paid into 9.7 million cash ISAs, while investors numbered far lower with stocks and shares ISA subscriptions of only 2.7 million people. And in that same year, there were only 2.7 million private landlords in the buy-to-let market. For context, in 2019, it is estimated that there were 52.6 million people aged 18 or over in the UK. Take control of your wealth. The financial assets that most people do hold, workplace pensions, are also likely to be invested in underperforming assets, needlessly focused heavily on UK stocks. Our pensions are instead invested in the whole world through a SIP, as are our ISAs, with a focus on the US market in particular. This is part of a reason why in both mine and Andy's portfolios, stock market funds have done so well recently. Over the same six month period that the S&P 500 has increased by 12%, the FTSE 100 increased by only 6.5%. The UK has consistently underperformed the US in recent decades, in part because it is full of old world industrial and banking stocks, whereas the US has all the most innovative technology companies. We see here how badly the UK's main sectors performed in the years of recovery after the financial crisis of 2008 compared to technology. If you manage your wealth yourself like we do, you can do much better than the fund managers. Both Andy and I choose to invest in the stock market, mostly through a portfolio of three equity ETFs that we call the ultimate portfolio, showcased in these videos. Check out this one for a practical way to invest in it through an invest engine stocks and shares ISA the cheapest and in our opinion the most user friendly way to do it. The ETFs we use are super low cost baskets of stocks that track indexes like the MSCI World Index and so are perfect for the long term investment strategy we're promoting today. A tough year ahead, but not for investors. While the UK is facing a winter of rising prices and pressure on living costs, those of us who have diligently built up assets over the years will be in for a fast mover ride. Those without assets face an inflationary period without any shield. If you think of the average Joe in the street, any savings they do have are surely held in the bank and they have no dividend or rental income to fall back on if their single source of income from their job fails to keep up with prices in the shops. But those with assets should expect the good times to continue throughout 2022, according to investment giants Goldman Sachs. They've just released their 2022 outlook for the investment world, with the S&P 500 expected to rise by another 9% to 5,100 by the end of the year. That's a 10% return, including dividends. The equity bull market will continue, said Goldman Sachs chief US equity strategist, listing some reasons for his optimism. Corporate tax rates will probably remain unchanged next year, helping profits. And households are still cash rich following the pandemic. Some of this is expected to move into stocks, increasing prices. Factored into this positive outlook is the expectation of rising interest rates, which do make 2022's forecast stock market returns lower than 2021, but 10% gains is still awesome. According to Goldman's data, the S&P 500 has historically generated an average 12 month return of 8% in environments of positive but slowing economic activity and rising interest rates. Take all forecasts with a pinch of salt, but it's good to hear a different take to the usual predictions of an imminent stock market crash. Not that it should matter either way if you're a long term investor. Not all assets are equal. Cryptocurrency assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum have also gone to the moon in the last few months, and many people will be congratulating themselves on that. But crypto should only be a small part of your portfolio despite its potential. 
the majority should be in stock market indexes and or property, both of which are relatively low risk investments compared to crypto because they have hundreds of years of history and are productive assets. When you own a stock market ETF, you own companies full of workers, all diligently toiling away to make profits for you, the shareholder. Likewise, when you own a rental property, you have tenants going out to work in order to pay you rent. By the way, anyone interested in learning more about how I make money from property passively and who are interested in doing this too, should check out this video next on how to make 25% returns effortlessly in buy-to-let property. You can also register an interest in a consultation with our approved property investment sourcing agents at our Find Me A Property page. Unlike stock index and property investors, owners of crypto hold the equivalent of a betting slip that gambles on that specific coin, token or blockchain having some practical mainstream use in the future. According to data from CoinMarketCap, there are currently more than 13,500 crypto coins in existence and this number is growing all the time. Only a handful could ever be used as mainstream currencies. In the same way that the UK's economy runs by everyone using the pound, there will eventually likely be just one or a handful of different cryptos that are accepted by everyone or none. A lot can happen in a short amount of time. If you're just starting out on your own financial journey, don't let it bother you if your investments aren't very established yet. For instance, I only started investing properly six years ago at age 27, and I've built up my whole portfolio since then without a high-flying job. At 273 grand, I'm already well on my way to financial freedom, and you can do it this quickly too. Left untouched without any further contributions, a pot like that should get to 500 grand in just 10 years at a modest 6% return after inflation. But if you get a few more years like the one we've just had, which could easily happen, who knows how quickly your pot could grow. Investments snowball over time and especially quickly when you catch a bull market. The important thing is that you start and that you contribute as much as you safely can each month regardless of what's going on in the markets. Question of the day, how has your portfolio done over the last few months? Join the conversation in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel we talk a lot about personal finance, investing and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackle.com. See you next time.